Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you will consider subscribing. Now there's been a lot of controversy and hype and social media posts out there, including some of my own posts, which got taken out of context about KTM's new demo mode. So I've recently, uh, well, it's been about five months now, I purchased this 2023 KTM 890 Adventure, one of the first bikes that KTM tried out the demo mode on. And today I'm gonna talk about the demo mode. So let's briefly cover what it is, how it works, and what are the pros and cons. Let's start by talking about what the demo mode isn't. So the demo mode is not a subscription service. There's a lot of people have been saying, oh, I hate these new subscription services that car companies and motorcycle companies are doing to get you pay a monthly fee to keep your features or whatever. It's not like that. Uh, I don't know how that rumor got started, but it has nothing to do with monthly charges or subscriptions. Now, to continue talking about what the demo mode is, I have to rewind back a few years. When KTM released the 790 Adventure R, I was one of the first people that bought that bike. Uh, and, you know, they've carried that design on to today with the, with the 890s and the 890Rs. Uh, when I bought my 790R, uh, certain features such as the cruise control, the quick shifter, the rally mode, and things like that were optional extras. They didn't come with the bike. If you wanted those features, you had to pay extra to unlock them. Now, for some of the features, the hardware was already on the bike, like the quick shifter uh, and the rally mode. It was just a software enabling. Uh, but back then, on the 790 anyway, uh, the cruise control, actually, they did have to change out some hardware to enable that. But they did charge extra for those services because, or those features, because a lot of riders didn't want them, but some riders did want them. So in fact, KTM has always charged extra for things like the cruise control, the quick shifter, uh, rally mode electronics, and things like that. This is not really anything new. Now, with the introduction of the 2023 KTM 890 Adventure, this bike you're looking at right here, my personal bike, KTM released something they called the demo mode. And what the demo mode did was it turned on all the features, enabled all the features, cruise control, quick shifter, rally mode, MSR, motor slip regulation. You got all those things for the first 1,500 kilometers or about 900 miles or so. Now, it bears mentioning that when you purchase the bike, if your dealership is good dealer and they're knowledgeable about this, they're gonna give you the option to buy the tech pack up front. The tech pack bundles all those things together. And in the US, it's about a $700 option. If you get that, then you don't have demo mode. You just have all those features from day one and they're never gonna turn off. And that's the way most people should probably buy this bike. You can also buy the features a la carte. So if you just want cruise control, you can just pay a small fee and just get that if you don't care about the other features. Now, what if you don't buy any of those features or you don't, you don't purchase a tech pack? Well, then yes, uh, your features are gonna turn off at around 900 miles. Now, as an experiment, I went ahead and did it that way. I didn't buy anything up front with the bike because I wanted to see what would happen when the demo mode turned off. And I'll put a little clip here of uh, when I was on a ride in Mojave Desert when the things turned off. Now, this kind of was taken out of context and seen in a negative light. I was just showing like what's gonna happen when that, when that demo mode goes away and when those features turn off. All right, so my 2023 KTM 890 Adventure has the new demo mode. Let me show you what's going on. So I just turned over 932 miles. So 932 miles or 1500 kilometers, demo mode expires, which means that even though the bike has cruise control, you can see the switch, it no longer works, it turns off. The bike has a quick shifter down there. That doesn't work anymore. Also, no more rally mode for nine level traction control and no more motor slip regulation or MSR. So you're losing a lot of key features and it turns off and says demo expired. Now, if I wanna keep those features that my bike already has, I've gotta go back to a KTM dealer and pay $700 for what they call the tech pack to have those features re-enabled. So these are the ups and downs of the demo mode. You get to try stuff out for a while, see if you like it, but then it kind of feels like you're being held hostage for more money when, when you have to go back in to turn on features or reactivate features your bike already has. So ups and downs, but let me know what you think in the comments below. So I think like everything in life and like everything in the world, there's gonna be pros and cons to this demo mode. So you can look at it as glass half full or glass half empty. It just depends on your perspective. The, on a positive light, uh, you do get to try out those features for the first 900 miles and see if those are things that you'd like to pay to keep. And you may decide that, look, I don't really use the cruise control, I've never used it, so why am I gonna pay extra for it? Which saves you some money. And if KTM had bundled that at the, at the, with the bike and just given, all of, given us all those features standard, the bike probably would have cost more. 
Now, if you want to look at it in a negative light, which a lot of people do, uh, you could look at the fact that, well, a KTM is delivering us a bike that has this hardware on it. It basically has these features there, but then they're putting them behind a paywall or a software uh, wall that's locked that you have to then pay to unlock them. So yeah, that, that is true. And it does kind of put it in our faces as consumers that like, look, these features are on the bike, but we're not gonna give them to you unless you pay us a little bit more money. Now, in terms of KTM's motivation uh, for doing this, and I'm gonna talk about what I think of this in a second, I think there's a, a few potential things they, they could have been looking at. Um, in a positive light, they were probably thinking, well, we're gonna give our customers a chance to try these features and see if they like them. Another more slightly cynical view, but there's probably some truth to this, is that KTM is probably hoping that you will like using your quick shifter and your cruise and your rally mode with a nine level traction control, and they hope that you will then come back to the dealer to pay the additional money to get that, which is revenue there for them on that. But also smartly that gets the customer into the dealership because when you go into a dealership with your bike, uh, you're more likely to buy parts, accessories, have a service done, all of which are after sales or post sales revenue, which dealerships and manufacturers are obviously looking to maximize as much as they can. Now, here's the subjective part of this video. Here's what I think of it. I actually don't have a problem with the way that they've done the demo mode. I think it's fine, and they've always charged extra for these features. However, I do think it was a PR mistake on KTM's part to do this. I think they underestimated the negative impact that this would have, the confusion that it would cause among riders as it already has out there. Um, they just underestimated that part. They didn't realize that, oh, customers now are gonna feel that we're kind of cheating them out of these features, we're putting them on the bike and then telling them to come back to pay more money for them. They underestimated that part of it and they made it a bit confusing. So I think they should have just kept it the way it was to begin with. Uh, which was these features were extra money and you could just pay for them when you bought the bike if you wanted them. And, and you know, that's the thing that you have with cars and, and motorcycles everywhere. If you want extra features, you're gonna have to pay more to get those features. They already were getting that money. So I'm a little confused as to why they did this. And I think it was, has been a little bit of a PR nightmare for KTM. Now, do they care? I don't know. Now, this is the part of the video where I ask for your input. Uh, what do you think of the demo mode? Negative, positive, don't care either way. Let me know in the comments below. Let's have a discussion about it. I think it's an interesting conversation to have. And I can guarantee you, this is not the first time that we're gonna see something like this from a manufacturer. It doesn't matter if it's KTM or somebody else. We're gonna see other you know, pay to play kind of services. We're seeing it in the car automotive world. We're gonna see it in the bike world as well. So uh, I know there's a lot of discussion about it, but we're gonna be seeing it. So let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I hope this video helps dispel some of the myths about the demo mode and helps clear up what it is. Hope it was useful. Please support Big Rock Moto. There's ways to do that in the description and the pinned comment below. Thanks for watching, ride safe, and I'll see you out there. Of course, we're on a closed course environment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even with the knobby tires, this 